figure out what to do with it after. So welcome. <laughs> welcome again. So maybe we each introduce ourselves and then we can talk about what we're doing. Yeah. Okay, I'll start. <laughs> I'm Camille Baker. I'm from uh, United. Well, I'm from Canada, but I live in the United Kingdom from uh, University for the Creative Arts and professor in interactive and immersive arts. And I have been producing alongside a colleague, the UK Garden of Earthly Delights, which is part of uh, Ars Electronica 2020 and the Kepler Gardens theme. And um, we have been trying to find a way to connect with uh, Barcelona Garden, the solar garden, with featuring the Stargazer uh, exhibition, immersive exhibition, and we have uh, Esperanceda and uh, Alejandro Martin, who's been the, uh, the driving force behind that. Over to you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Camille. It's great for us to do this cooperation to bridge uh, the two gardens in, in Barcelona, Solar Orchard, and in UK, the Earth, Earth, Earthly Delights. And today uh, we will try to serve the content because it, it, we have a very exciting program today. We have uh, uh, several pieces that will uh, happen in the dome, but also there are live uh, performances that means that is for the people that is in Barcelona, but the people who will be in the in YouTube and our YouTube channel, seeing how, what is happening in our center, and also we have uh, also a great cooperation with a Japanese DG that is is Glad Scientist that will uh, sh uh, showcase a wonderful uh, BG party at the at the end of the day. And now uh, I, I will to introduce uh, the f one of the projects that is involving perf performance and sound and projection into, into the dome. Uh, we have here uh, Felix Scholler, that is, uh, he's based in Paris, he's cooperating with MIT Media Lab. Uh, is one of the, of the members of the team with uh, the performer Moon Rivas and also another artist and technician Fer Ferran Belda that is over there in the back and, and uh, perhaps I, I ask Felix to introduce what, uh, we, what we are going to see today. Thank you. My name is uh, Felix uh, Schoeller. I'm from Paris. I'm a neuroscientist and a creative technologist. Uh, my work mainly touched upon the role of the body and body perception in the emergence of human emotions. And the piece that we're working on tonight with uh, Ferran and Moon is uh, concerns uh, primordial emotions of awe and wonder. Uh, it's called Wonders, and the general idea is to um, uh, embody natural phenomena that are largely beyond human scale uh, in the dome built for the uh, residency. So Moon Ribas uh, is a pioneer artist, uh, famous for uh, um, her implants that allow her to detect uh, earthquakes and uh, other kinds of natural phenomena. And the goal here, we built a technology uh, which we call Fuga, which transforms human gestures into sound. So it's a set of uh, Accelerator, accelerometers and mag magnetometer and gyroscopes that send some Wi-Fi signal to a computer uh, here with the software and that then that signal is sent to another computer which modulates visuals which are apparent in the in the dome so moon's gestures trigger sounds of earthquakes and explosions and in return these sounds modulate uh, visuals of magma uh, and explosions on the dome uh, and then the piece lasts 10 minutes and the goal is really to create that feeling of awe and the sublime and wonder that we believe are the origins of art, science, and uh, even religion. Yeah, amazing. That sounds really cool. And you're covering so many different areas. It sounds quite uh, big in terms of the conceptual um, aspects that you're trying to achieve here. 
Maybe tell us more about how that came about. Where, where did these ideas come from? Right, so um, I think the, the general idea here is to uh, start from the observation that uh, humans are living organisms and as all living organisms, we can be described and thought of in terms of perception and action cycles. So we have a set of sense organs that allow us to uh, perceive things in the external world, but also in the internal world. Um, so things like the retina you know, on our eyes, the cochlea in the ear, uh, or the skin that can allow us to detect uh, uh, you know, changes in the external world and uh, adapt our mental representation uh, of that external world. And then uh, in return, we can also act upon this world and create the changes that we would like to uh, see to our sophisticated motor system and so on. And um, the, the idea here is to extend uh, considerably this uh, perception action cycle. Uh, so extending perception with sensors connected to uh, seismometers, uh, seismometers or uh, even uh, cosmic phenomena uh, through um, uh, radio astronomical uh, uh, instruments. Uh, so radically enhancing the perception uh, inputs, the perceptual input of, of the, uh, the performer and also radically uh, enhance the uh, action possibility of the performer. So um, uh, allowing her to do more basically. And so in this context, uh, you have some events that is largely beyond human scale. So things like earthquakes, or uh, volcanic eruptions. And we're even looking into uh, cosmic events like gamma ray bursts, which are events that disperse more energy in a few seconds than the sun in its entire lifetime. And, um, and then the performer is just a vehicle for that event to uh, unfold and take place. So it's just a media, the performer becomes a media. Thank you. Thank you very much, Felix. We have more uh, guests uh, now in the in the room. Welcome, Mosen. Uh, welcome, Lucas. Uh, Hello. <laughs> Yeah, good. You don't? No. Please, uh, Camille, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Sorry, sorry, somehow I got muted. Yes, we were just talking about how, uh, what everyone's doing in Barcelona, but also how we connect with the different um, gardens in UK and in Barcelona. Oh, and we have a few more people joining us. Great. So Felix just sort of described what he's doing and where the ideas come from. Maybe we can ask uh, the both groups as well to sort of answer those questions. So what is it you're showing to, or doing today and, um, and where did the ideas come from? I, I don't mind who starts, maybe, maybe uh, the folks who, Come in next, Mosen. Yeah, Lucas Mosen. Yeah. Uh, have you or do you want to go? Oh, 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 oh. Well, my idea is, like I said, um, very bound to a spherical, like just experience. So it's like connected to the narrative of your own most possible painting. And so mainly it's just going to be like a video installation whilst uh, being inside of the dome and then have have it like like sound created towards the video so it's not just music playing it's actually like the sound matches the video so it's like it's supposed to be an emerging experience and you're supposed to become the painting's narrative as a spectator or higher power watching the world and it's the digital abstraction obviously and i hope video and music correlate to that and uh, people will emerge in it and get closer to the painting's narrative or the abstraction of it in this case, I think, yes. Great. And where did the ideas come from? Um, the idea came actually from from building and creating the dome, I think. Well, if you if you build a sphere, and also I have been very interested in, in the painting before as it's been like really like 
quite a bit of an eye opener when you, the more you engage with it. But building a dome and then of course reading about the painting and um, its narrative and uh, reading a book from uh, Josef Kerner, who's an art historian about Brügel and Bosch and their parallel worlds that they created. So then it came to my mind that entering the sphere is a parallel world. And then of course, having the cryptic close and the biblical narrative to it um, was a, I thought it was a fun topic to explore and to dive in. So this is where the idea came from. Fabulous, great. Who wants to go next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we already presented like four projects and- Yeah, so this yeah. is sort of a different audience. So, so, and you were pitching, so there's slightly different uh, focus, right? So if you can just sort of summarize what the project is, what you're doing, and and what where the ideas come from it's it's just a quick we're connecting the two audiences of of uk and, and barcelona so i'll be sending this out to a different audience who may not have seen what you did before yes Masen, we are talking about the project we you are showing today uh, uh, with uh, jenk and uh, jose carlos and Anne. Oh, okay, okay yeah th this project that we already showed it like in one hour ago i think Tang will also describe it. It's the version, somehow version two of a skin, a skin synthesizer project, which was, which is about generating sound and create some visuals and uh, everything will change based on the movement that of a performer inside the room. And the new version, the first version was with motion suit that which works just with motion suit and uh, performance should use it. But in the new version, Chang also adds some new features with uh, Kinect. So uh, everyone can try it and uh, at the same time, at the real time, they see some lights and so many effects and ger ger generate some music. And I think Cheng can also describe it. Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Like, so we have just one hour ago at 12 o'clock, we presented or we were live streaming the project from inside the dome to the Esponsada channel on YouTube. And the project is called Skin Synthesizer. And that was born during the first residency here at Esperanceda, Immensive Artists in Residency Program. And it's a group project that me, Jose, and Mozen have developed together. And um, so the project deals with the idea of, like, um, the skin synthesizer is trying to deal with the idea of, like, in this post-human criticism, like, how to break the um, hierarchy between humans and non-humans. And... Um, what we wanted to do, like coming from different backgrounds, Jose is so much into tool building and tool constructing tools with hardware and software with his uh, uh, genius mind. I don't know how he does those stuff. And Jose into being into poetics and traditions and the soul and the connecting your body with the environment. And um, so we put things together. What we have done is that we, we first uh, created this tool which allows the user through motion tracking suit to control a granular synthesizer in real time, meaning that it's, it became a performative tool, if I may say so. So um, it kind of both challenges the performer and the audience at the same time because it's so many things, that unexpected things happen during the performative piece in terms of soundscape. And um, what we have done during this residency we try to adopt, uh, adapt the project into a dome environment, just spherical dome environment, because we have understood during the first residency the uh, visual environment was a bit uh, blank. It was more concentrated on the audio. So we were trying to kind of include more of a visual environment into it, like a 3D environment, which is, again, interactive to the user, meaning that it's um, an environment consisting of... Uh, weird animals that we stretched, distorted a bit and animated animals and so on. And the performer this time not only have the control of the sound, but also the visual environment. The, the performer can ma magnify, is that a word, that can uh, attract, can, can create a space of gravity around his or her body and then act as a light source and gravity source. Um, so yeah, this is more or less the summary of this project, I would say. The Perhaps uh, we could ask also Anna, because she's the performer. 
to you ask Emma because you're the performer. They ask you because you're the performer. Like, what's your opinion? Like, what? Uh, I don't sorry. Hear oh, you don't hear anything. No. There you go. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, sorry. Uh, <laughs> problems of remote connection. <laughs> it was fun. Huh? Uh, I am not a performer, so for me it's uh, a different kind of experience. But um, the first time I tried the project in February, it was uh, more about how to you were feeling. For for me, it was the first time of feeling sound coming really out of my body. So every minimal difference between the and distances between my hand and my head or every joint was reactive it was incredible and now inside the dome they really take it to a next level because uh, you are not just manipulating sounds but you are you are the center of this uh, environment that reacts to you but on the other side influences you so much because the dome is so immersive it's such an immersive experience uh, that it creates really a feedback loop and it was it was very very interesting yeah. and this granular the, this tool of the granular synthesizer is um, different somehow every time it surprises you every time it's not uh, that you do this and the sound is uh, immediately what you expect with every movement it reacts differently so it creates an experience like right? and we surprised her today we surprised her today a, a bit more just 10 minutes before the show i changed the um, positions of the joints meaning that i changed the command like how she she's controlling the sound um gave different controls to different joints and then of course she knew from the first experience how it's more or less sound like but then she, i kind of uh, without her knowing it I forced her to move differently in that environment of uh, like full of animals and she started moving very weirdly in order to have a little bit of control and attach herself to the environment. And yeah, it's like we understood that it's flexible, like we can uh, change the rule set of it and it can be also applied to stages. That's, that, I think that's interesting because of course we have an audiovisual representation of it, but it also can be applied to um, different formats, I would say, different performative uh, pieces and so on. And do, do the, does the audience feel this too, or is it just the performer? This is also for the audience. So because of the corona regulations, because we can allow only a couple of people inside the dome, and because of course we don't want to uh, give the motion tracking suit to every people, I mean, of course it would be dangerous. So we have another version now using Kinect which is the infrared uh, motion tracking detector. Without touching anyone, you can detect the motion in real time. So now there's an additional Kinect inside, which allows any uh, visitor to test out and to experience that. Yeah, nice. So there's a, for example, right now at the moment inside the dome, there's a friend of ours, Isabel. She's a material arts um, practitioner, I hope so. She's testing her own um, performance inside the dome. So, so great, it's great. Is, um, so we're going to see more of that tonight, is that correct? And then, um, or have you finished it or is it done for now? Um, we, have, uh, we, have, we have just done a finished live session. But of course, if, it's, uh, if there's a demand, we can, it's ready to show. So we can show it once again for half an hour. It's uh, more or less plug and play. So yeah, of course, it's possible to show again. As long so, as we have a time a question for everyone what um what happens after this like this ars electronica is over the dome is finished what happens to your projects where are you what are you doing next with the projects and maybe this is something alejandro can answer i don't know what what what's the next step yes uh we think this is a, this this is a, a show that is opening a lot of doors because uh, during this week we have a very interesting visits for several institutions in Barcelona. Uh, two of them is the Design Hub and the Mobile World Congress, and they were interested to to see the.
Is only Alejandro frozen? Yes, yes. It's on here. Yes, yes. 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 I, I'm sorry because my 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 connection is not very good here. I don't know why. Did you hear me now? Yeah, we do. Just carry on from where you left off. Yes. Did you hear about the the visits that were in Esperanceda? No. Yeah. Carry on from talk about that. Yes. Yes, the, uh, we have uh, visits from the director of the Design Hub and the uh, director of Mobile World Congress, and they were interested to, to show there. Also, we have the connection with a MIT uh, Digital Center in Milan that is interested also to show some pieces in November. And we are also happy to have uh, more uh, feedback from the UK institutions to have the possibilities to show because also the DOM structure is a mobile structure we could uh, easily transport um, because it also was uh, our piece of uh, architecture and design. We can we can talk about how to do that, I'm sure. Um, I mean, I don't know who who to start with, but we can definitely talk about where that goes next. And um, is it something that you are showing in, in Barcelona after this again, or is this a time limited thing? Yes, the idea is to do more shows in Barcelona, but also to try to do internationally. Mm. Uh, because uh, now we understand we uh, and also many many visitors uh, that were here also for the cultural institute of catalonia institute ramon yul they uh, have seen that uh, having this dome uh, to to do many projects is uh, very good for this for the city but also for bringing the this kind of uh, immersive uh, spaces to other institutions. Mm -hmm. That's why it is a, a great opportunity to, to have uh, that. Uh, yes, and, and finally, because uh, I think we want us to connect the DOM with other immersive spaces. We are inviting institutions who has immersive rooms to uh, connect with us uh, to show uh, at the same time or to exchange uh, the content. We are uh, open in, in many. Oh. He's gone away again. Um, but that's a good opportunity for me to ask questions from the rest of you. Um, why, I mean, I know you decided to make a dome. What was the decision to go from say um, VR headsets to dome uh, approach and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each in terms of your own creative practices? I don't care. Maybe we go back to Felix because he's sitting there in the background. Yes. So, um, sorry, can, can you repeat the question? Sorry, because the uh, okay. moon is a bit sick, so I... Uh... Oh, it's okay. Um, just that, why did you, I mean, I guess some of this probably came from Esperanceta, but what was the decision to go and do a dome type project rather than a, a VR project? And what are the pluses and minuses or pros and cons between headset versus dome right. space immersion? Well, I think this really calls for the question of uh, virtuality and why are so many, so many people, so many artists obsessed with the virtual? Uh, and there are a number of theoreticians that are also discussing this uh, I think fascinating idea of the end of reality, just that we, you had the end of history, a number of thinkers have been discussing the end of reality and we may very well be just in the middle of it. Um, and I think the dome has a number of advantages uh, in comparison to uh, VR. Uh, one of the problem of VR is that it's delivering uh, confusing uh, visual uh, stimuli, which uh, the brain is not used to and frankly, the retina neither. And the retina is, is part of the brain, uh, by the way. And so um, having a artificial live visual stream that does not correspond or does not synchronize with the rest of the sensory inputs that you may have 
through, for example, your uh, cochlea or your proprioception, which also is based uh, in the uh, ear, uh, or your uh, kinesthesia and the rest of your sensory apparatus uh, can be very uh, demanding, challenging, and damaging for the human brain. Um, the, for example, we know that uh, visual motor uh, connections are really critical in the early uh, ages of life. And, uh, you know, playing around with uh, confusing and contradictory uh, sensory and proprioceptive input like this may be a problematic. These are all problems you don't have in the dome because the dome is reality. And uh, it's still a screen, but it's much bigger and it can provide an environment. And it's not, um, the locus of attention in the dome also can be much more controlled and can be directed towards human beings or objects and not necessarily the, the screen. Um, Are you so, saying it's more immersive in some ways? So there's a number of questions as to what immersion really means. Uh, I wouldn't be able to say if it's more immersive or not. I really, I think that depends on the kind of projects that are uh, displayed in the dome. But what I'm saying is that the dome just makes much more sense to me in terms of uh, uh, sensory and motor apparatus. And for your work in particular? Yeah, in this case also it makes more sense because we have a live performance with a human actually dancing and being able to use that amazing dome that uh, the people from uh, the Point3 uh, laboratory built is, is really a chance. Stop, stop. Oops, anyone else want to address that? Yeah, I would, I would, I would comment. Like, um, if we don't, I mean, if we don't reduce the notion of VR to HMD, to a head-mounted display, I think it would be more useful. I think for me, it would be better to understand how, how we approach the virtual environments or virtual reality. That is not just uh, ending inside of a headset, but then it can also expand itself into a dome content, right? And um, one, of the t one of the discussions we were early, like previously having in, during the lockdown, I think, Camille, you were also part of that talk, that we have understood that the HMD, head mounted display, which is the, which is the central object of the uh, virtual reality, that is not anymore a shared object. It's an individual object. It's the person object that we cannot share anymore because it's so um, right, dangerous, right? And so we wanted to play with the idea like, okay, how can we still create a shared experience? And the dome, the physical environment, we understood that we cannot separate the virtual reality from the physical actuality from the physical reality so they are bound to each other and so we wanted to kind of find the solution in the physical environment right and it was not about like cleaning the headset and so on and so we said okay we're going to go for a full dome experience that is still allowing us to enter and exit the experience without being inside the head mounted display and i think that was the moment when why we found dome useful for our creations, and actually, we learned a lot inside the dome. We have understood that it has much more potentials. Like in terms, like you know, we could be able to reflect more on our own projects. So, yeah, I would say so. Great, fantastic. So, so I guess the question is: Is the head-mounted display dead, and is it not useful for artists? I mean, it's an open question. It's not just for you. Yeah, but sure. Maybe the other folks want to answer that. Yes, no. <laughs> we, we are also missing one project that we have also today, that is a Ferran Belda with lasers and other, other devices. He was uh, in, the, in the studio with Felix, but uh, I don't know where is it. Uh, Felix? Uh, uh, yeah, he's, uh, I think he's gone to get the material for the show tonight. He's uh, in his car. I'm about to send uh, his number to Alessia here. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's fine. It's, n it's nice to hear from everyone and find out what you're doing. But it, it's, you know, this is an extra thing and you guys are all really busy and I appreciate that. And thank you for your, your time and taking a few minutes out. Did, it, did anyone else want to address that issue? I'm just interested because there's, there's a lot of hype around the headsets and, and that form of immersion at the moment. And I'm just curious as artists, if you think it's overhyped and if this is not where you want to be going, if you're talking about immersion or 
if it, it's still interesting to you, but not in the way that it's being hyped or, you know, however you want to answer that question, but there's a lot of hype around this. And, and so I'm just wondering what your thoughts. I think, um, I think Cenk is absolutely right. I think the social element of the dome is what makes it fundamentally different from anything uh, that is purely uh, visual. Um, and uh, when we think about it, most of our, um, so I think the dome has like two, two main differences. First, it's a social thing. That's absolutely correct. And most of our uh, technology today is designed for one person only. If you think about uh, the phone, for example, that's just for one person to use it. It's not uh, collaborative, it's not social. Uh, if you think about uh, uh, com you know, computers or you know, VR headsets and so on, this, this, they're not meant for uh, groups. And humans are fundamentally social creatures. So this is kind of contradicting the basis of who we are. Uh, and so I think emphasizing that the dome is social is, is, is really what makes it fundamentally different from uh, a, a, a standard VR headset and what makes it more you know, uh, suited for a human user. Uh, and then the other elements is the fact that in the dome, uh, the, um, the video or the whatever content, visual content is displayed is not uh, aiming directly at you, but is reflected on a surface. And that makes a big difference as well uh, in terms of the kind of effect that it can have on uh, human personality. For example, we know that um, there's some studies by, they're kind of questioned, but it was like, I think it's the son of Marshall McLean. I think he's called Eric, uh, who did some studies where he uh, had two groups of people uh, and uh, a screen in the middle with a projector and uh, that we would project onto the screen. And so one group of people would have the direct light uh, coming from the projector into their eyes and the other group would see the reflection of it. And he found that in the subjective report, he, he showed the film and then he asked everybody to uh, you know, tell about the film and their feeling and how they experienced the film. And he found that the group that had the, uh, um, the light directly aimed at their retina and not reflected on some surface were uh, much more likely to talk about them and their personal experience to say, oh, I felt like, you know, this guy did this and I wouldn't have done that, blah, blah, blah. Whereas the other group, they were much more objective and much more like describing the events that un unfolded. And, and so they weren't using the pronoun I so much. So this kind of thing is also interesting. Um, and one final thing with the dome that makes it so interesting and one aspect that we're exploring is that you can actually play with lights and not just with uh, reflections of uh, some pre-recorded events. So you can play with physical light and, and, and in a way where it comes closer to uh, theater or uh, even I would say architecture because light is fundamentally important, like it's a really important element in architecture. So these are things that you don't get in the VR, VR headsets and for good reasons again, because the VR headsets are, is meant for a single individual, which is a fantasy that doesn't exist in the real world. We're always social, we're always interacting with others and everything we do, all the you know, useful objects we have, they're intended for like social use. Thank you. Anyone want to add anything specific different to that in any, in terms I, of projects? Yeah, I, I highly agree with the emergent factor of, uh, of being like in a social group, especially since my topic is bound to a painting and usual like perceptions of a painting is mostly in a group and you like discuss about it and you experience it together. And that emphasizes also the experience and, and the, like being bound to it. So like an, like being in an art gallery or visiting a painting, it's not that you have to remember it and then the next person goes to the experience. No, it's like something you share and something you interact with like like instantly. And that interaction and that, that like somebody, maybe somebody spots something else also because it's surrounding you and it, it um, triggers like a lot more of your senses and also your emotions like think more strongly because it's like happening right now and we're all together in it so somebody might spot different elements than the other does and that sharing that immediate sharing that usually would like fall off if it's for example like an experience of 10 minutes or eight minutes but um you forget you wouldn't like immediately say it or like you might remember it but you're not going to talk about it here you immediately 
have a discussion about, you immediately, you immediately an analyze and you, you share thoughts and that, that's what bounds you. Like I think, think closer to it than, than just a VR experience where you isolate it. So especially in this case, I think it's very pleasing and a lot more interesting to deal with it. Yeah, great. It, it, so I mean, yeah, we should not just uh, destroy now the VR <laughs> like because we have at home. I mean, of course, virtual. I mean, of course, virtual reality and uh, head-mounted display also has some certain social attitude and social platforms where we, all the social platforms actually now where we gather, socialize, meet lately, like you know, from Mozilla Hubs to Sansa, even Facebook and like. So this is this has been there and it's still growing, and it has a social attitude. But I would say I was reading an article the other day. I, I found it very interesting that argues the social and public side of the virtual reality that is definitely social it can be social private semi-public and uh, public space it can offer public space private space and public space but in fact they are more like shopping malls they are more like shopping malls where you are consumed and where you consume it doesn't offer you because it surveys you and it's like it's watching you yeah? it's, but it doesn't give you certain rights where you can in whereas in the real reality like sorry physical reality in, in public space would be different your actions would be different so i think there's an interesting point there like if it's whether it's public or private or i don't know like who owns the rights of it who owns my data data privacy and so on but yeah i don't know you are the moderator here you know? <laughs> <laughs> no i think that's really interesting i i guess i suppose with um corona a lot of activities happened around how to be social in the headset or in vr and so that may develop and it may change and you may have different attitudes toward this as it progresses and develops um but yeah I, this uh, element of privacy and and the issues around public and private are really really interesting. I mean, I'm more interested from the artistic point of view about how this is interesting in your own work and your own practice and, and has this experience changed your practice? Are you more or less interested? It sounds like more interested in the physical form of immersion. Um, but, you know, I'm just curious how this, this experience and this um, process, both of the residency in February and this, this one now, will change and impact your future uh, artistic development, whether you're going to continue in this particular vein or if you, this is just one of the many things you do or, or you know, where is it going? Anyone can pick that up. Uh, I think, yeah, I think uh, regarding to this and last question, for me, it's like, yeah, I, I agree with all the things about social and private and everything. And for me, it's kind of experience, like it, the, the doom is a kind of new experience about, I mean, maybe let's say about aesthetic, about or playing with the elements. Because, for example, right now in the, in the project that I personally work on, uh, I mean, RTTT, I'm in, in a new, in a, another version, I'm, I'm trying to do something with a three inch F, a screen. And in, there is a VR piece and also the doom. And for me, the Doom was like something more like experience with a new aesthetic to find something new, do something new inside this platform. Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, it's somehow, maybe it's somehow similar to VR, the experience because it's immersive, but I think it's, it's so much, much different about the lights, about how you experience it. Maybe finally, I think we cannot compare it even like, it's like it's a kind of compare AR to VR and say, okay, this one is more better for this situation or not. Yeah, for me, the Doom is really, really nice and wonderful and effective experience to present a work inside because it brings so many new things for the audience, I think. Yeah, that's that's what I think about this experience. Uh, yeah, um, so is it going to change where you go with your, your practice? Sorry? Will it change the direction of your future practice? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because because we, for example, in in the skin project, as change said, we totally changed the system at all the technology of the project based on the room. So it's a kind of like bring some new, like big some new somehow 
platform for artists to design something based on new platform, like what we did for a skin project. The project totally, uh, right now, the version two of the project is totally different in, in the function somehow, because the Kinect uh, is coming uh, and the uh, motion uh, we, we change it to Kinect. And also from aesthetic, we change a little bit as change state. Uh, this, this using these images is really working well, working better than the last, for example, um, like uh, uh, colors and a black background the screen. Yeah, I think I think it, it could change a lot. Brilliant. So, anyone else want to address that? Yeah. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. So, uh, one thing I noticed uh, on myself and also maybe on uh, some of the others is the, the the dome and the experience made me very cosmic and uh, triggered some of my early interests in uh, cosmology and astrophysics uh, uh, and that, that's something that you in like many projects people uh, talk about the stars and uh, they're interested in dying stars for example and uh, very very far objects or very 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 big objects uh, they're interested also in the abyss and there's the whole question about perception that uh, is kind of recurrent in most of the pro projects. Uh, and if you, if you want to be more general about uh, cognitive functions, so some people are talking about memory, uh, mm -hmm. other people are talking about emotion. Uh, mm -hmm. and, but in general, there's this idea of perception and going beyond perception and what we cannot perceive, mm -hmm. make perceivable, the unperce you know, what cannot be perceived through the mere senses. Um, and so that, that's kind of an effect that I see. I don't know if it's related to the dome. I don't know if it's related to VR. I don't know. It's just maybe a bias because of uh, the selection and who we are and the fact that we all share some common interests. But I find that uh, there's this, um, you know, shared passion for the unknown and the, the very far, the very distant. Uh, and, and I find that really interesting. And on my side, like, that really worked. Like, because the, another element we didn't discuss with the dome is the fact that it's situated. The VR headset could be anywhere, but the dome is situated and it's someplace inside or outside, but situated somewhere. And so the events that take place there, they couldn't be taking place somewhere else, at least not under this, you know, very particular condition. And um, I think that that's another cr critical element. And so personally, it, it, I, I got very passionate about the idea of celebrating nature and making nature uh, leave or uh, be perceivable in a situated environment that is, you know, controlled. Uh, and, and that I find that really interesting. For example, the idea of, uh, you know, dancing specific uh, cosmological events while they're happening, um, thanks to uh, scientific instruments that can make them available to our senses and our cognition. Uh, and to apparatus like the, the one we're using to create some effects through sound or visuals to represent these things that have been fascinating, uh, that has have fascinated humans since the beginning of our history. So it made me very cosmic. And I think <laughs> some other people too. <laughs> Great, fantastic. I, I think also is a, a cosmic and ritualistic because also we have several uh, performances that go in this direction. Also the show we have to, uh, today, Elements, is using fog and laser lights. That means that you are invited to be in a very alterated space. That... Oh, it's dropped out again. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, perhaps someone else wants to pick that up, but just before we sort of stop that question or end that piece, anyone else want to talk about how it changed the practice in any way? Lucas or Cenk? Well, it changed the practice. I mean, it, like we said, each, each tool has its own use and its own, like, like, brain in it. This is like a very, like, like we said, um, a social experience, and of course, like a lot more spiritual. And I think in my, like for me personally, it just helped me to use, like to, to emphasize more on what's, what's the tools are made for, or what's better to work with. So like the privacy, privacy aspect would, would be a bit more lost in a dome if you're there with other people, like 
that you just um, emphasize more and what to ask her for. But then again, of course, the interconnection is also very interesting, like Stargazer project, for example, when you connect the two of them. So it just made me more aware of, of how much there is and how much there are like cross sections to connect with and to experience it more. Just like in generally like a gaze experience to have that canvas kind of of um, your surroundings. Like it was just generally a great experience that wants you to explore more in general. That that's my strongest output I think. Uh -huh. Sorry, we lost you, Alejandro, but I feel like there's sort of a natural end to this conversation. Maybe you're all just eager to get back to preparing you, for whatever you're doing. Did you hear me? Uh, I was uh, telling about the also award that we are showing today about with laser and smokes that for me alterates the space because finally the dome is a volume that you could play uh, otherwise, that in a virtual reality that is only uh, digital. We didn't hear that, but thank you, that's good. Um, yeah, well, is there anything else some of the artists want to say? I, I might have a few more words with Alejandro, but um, if you, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about in terms of what you've been doing, the process? Yeah. I think your question about the influence of uh, this technology on human creative practices is a very relevant and interesting one. And I'd love to hear what you think, because in the domain of science, for example, there are a number of thinkers uh, that uh, assume that technology precedes science, that you need the compass in order to be able to do geometry, or that the computer has allowed uh, the emergence of the science as we know it uh, in the past decades. Um, and in the domain of art, that's really interesting too. And I've never actually thought about the importance of, you know, and of course it's important, like the technique and the technology for, for art. And uh, so I'd love to know what you, you think about this, this question and what, you know, motivated you to ask this particular question. Me personally? Yeah. Um, well, because I'm also making a project and I'm, uh, I initially wanted to work in a dome and the people I've been working with were so excited to work in VR, but I'm very much still wanting to move it eventually back into a dome space for some of the reasons you said. But I think you're right that, I mean, for, from my experience, I am always interested in a new tool that comes out and I want to figure out how to break it or make it different or, you know, use it in a different way than it's being uh, promoted by the technology industry because I don't think they know the potential that it could be until you give, you know, artists these tools. I think the artists are the ones that really um, explore things that hadn't been thought of. And so I'm always interested to hear from artists about how they want to change, break, uh, augment, rethink certain tools. And, and I, I myself have been exploring that as well. And, and it's just, you can do things without the tools or you can make your own tool. And a lot of artists are doing that as well. Um, but it is interesting from a, I mean, I'm also a, an ed educator and I'm educating students on the tools and letting them think about how they can play with them and explore them and, and find ways to change them. And I, I find it more, um, if you do, it's almost like if you don't have the tool to, you can't really think about how to break it, <laughs> maybe. Um, so, so yes, one might precede the other, but I think it goes the other way too, because artists invent tools all the time. And that's why I've been involved in the starts projects and the, the activities I've been in, because I've been interested in promoting artists to do these kinds of experiments and innovations, and also to push industry and, and especially tech industry to do different things and to think different and be open to new ideas and to and new innovations and new approaches because on some level I think they need each other um, to to progress you know as humans we're always inventing tools and we're and we're finding new ways of working with them and I think I think that's for me anyways really interesting and exciting. So Thank you very much. Can, can I ask you, uh, what are some of the, some of the most creative uh, acts by artists from consumer technology that you've seen? What are some, you know, some of the most creative 
um, reformation of existing tools that you've seen uh, in the various projects you've been engaging in, related to well, Doom also, like creative I uses think, of Doom. I feel like that's huge because I, I feel like there's been so many that I start to get overwhelmed. But um, I mean, I do, I don't know from, from consumer point of view. Yeah, yeah, there's consumer tools all the time. I mean, I can think of so many and then I kind of forget which which or which, but the one that always sticks in my head, at least recently, was where this, and it wasn't, it wasn't a consumer tool, but it was a technology that we, um, and part of ourselves that we don't think about. And that was a project a few years ago where a pop star from, I think it was Japan or Korea, decided to record her lyrics and her music on DNA strand. And I thought that was like, wow, that's a really different approach to storage <laughs> to DNA and maybe the the lyrics and the song itself might have been banal which I think it was but it was the idea to have it was that idea in itself that I thought was pretty mind-blowing I mean there have uh, there have been others um but uh, like I say I feel like it's sort of a natural thing uh, I'd have to you that's that's a trick question I'll have to I'd have to go back and think of a few more and um and come back to you on that. But yeah, there have been, I mean, I feel like it's kind of done in every project I've seen that people, take, you know, there was a few years ago, someone taking, you know, way back now, showing my age, playing with uh, video technology where they were uh, trying to find ways to make it sense, uh, like in dance, a lot of dancers have been playing with technology in different ways and how to help them with their movement and, and or their choreography. and video was sort of the beginning of that but i've seen a lot of different different work with sensors with um sounds with you know different forms of triggering um yeah lots of different things i'd have to go back and get get you a list but there's been a lot of different things and i find that super exciting both as uh to stimulate me but also to help help promote that arts are really important for technology and science to engage with really to push their own practices and their own interventions and innovations sorry i kind of i, I only gave you a couple of examples but um i really have to spend some time on that because there's so many different work, amazing projects out there any other any other thoughts i feel like we're coming starting to come to a natural end i mean um I guess I want to throw this back to Alejandro, uh, depending on your connection there. Uh, <laughs> what, what made you and Esperanceta go down this road, I suppose, and, and in terms of commissioning and um, supporting artists in this dimension? It looks like you've frozen again. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. I could hear you. Could you hear me uh, to me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yes. Uh, our next plan is is to go... Uh, could you hear me now? Yeah, yes. Yes. Our next plan is to develop further the DOM in several directions. And I think now we are going to explore more the 3D uh, sound. Uh, involving also artists and institutions that are investigating the construction of the space with the sound and also other other kind of sound. Oh. <laughs> There's another pause there. <laughs> so the, a really great technology would be to make, make no, it easier. <laughs> be really great to make these social technologies better, yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah yes. It's the internet. Did you hear me the last words? About uh, the, just no, about the, the 3D sound, yes, we heard that. 3D sound and exploring other, other uh, in, interactivity with uh, sensations that could be smells or other kind of uh, uh, yeah, that sen sounds really good. Sens sensory sensory environment yeah. and what about connecting multiple domes or something like that? yes uh, it, it was also the idea that to create this kind of uh, uh, 
I think we're, we were going to have to wrap up very soon because this is going to be painful for viewers as much as it is for us. <laughs> oh, you guys have been stellar. I know you got to get back to work, some of you. So maybe we'll just let you go and, uh, and we'll probably wrap this up. Thank you so much. I'm going to promote this on some socials and on the starts a page and help make sure that uh, other people outside of uh, our two little uh, social realms can get a sense of what you're up to and, uh, and maybe, yeah, obviously further connections in the future, how we can work together is something that um, Alejandro and I are working on as well as some of the activities that um, uh, Santori and his Helsinki XR group are involved in. So fabulous. Thank you guys. Have a great day and event tonight and uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. Come out. There we go.